Hello YouTubers, Joe Kersey here on Saturday, September 14th, 2014. And uh, about 1.30 in the afternoon, Eastern Daylight Time. Now I've been uh, in and out. It's a glorious day, 72 degrees, very dry. It looks like we're going to have about five or six more days of this here without rain. Um, so that's good. Very mild weather. The highs around 78, 77. Lows in the low 50s, high 40s. Perfect weather. That's not what I'm here to talk to you about. As you may have gathered by now, if you watch me with any degree of you know regularity, I uh, my my mind just sort of free associates from time to time. And uh, I got, you know, I got thinking about uh, a situation at a, you know, as Paul would say, a dinner party. Uh, when I was on a trip to visit friends down in South Central North Carolina. And uh, the three, well, the two, the two protagonists in this story, well, no, well, there's three protagonists, that's me. I'm not dead yet, by the grace of God, but the other two are dead. So I can talk fairly freely about it, but I'm not going to tell you their names because I'm still you know, closely associated with other members of the family. Um, the fellow I was visiting was a, um, uh, had been a, 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 a resident uh, at Grand Hospital. You know, when I was doing anesthesia and we got yakking back and forth and became, you know, very, you know, briefly, very good friends. I mean, very good friends. I mean, to the point that he asked me to, well, I can't really go into that, but uh, no, good friends. And, um, and I'd go down there and I'd visit he and his wife or him and his wife and uh, then later on their daughter when she came along. Uh, down there, although actually the daughter was born shortly after they first moved there in 1989. But to me that is, hey, I mean, we were good friends. And so I, you know, I, I would routinely go down there three or four or five times a year. You know, I'd take his mother down there to visit, you know. I drove her down there the last time she went down there to die, you know, on a bed in his library slash office in their house three months later. So, I mean, I was close to the family. Still am, you know, you know, basically, but not in the sense of going, you know, continually being in their presence a lot. In any case, uh, he was a physician. He was an internal medicine physician down there. Oh, go away, B. Don't, don't force me. And, uh, you know, when I had considered moving down there to do anesthesia, I had interviewed with a number of the docs, as I had said in an earlier piece. And uh, but the but one of the ones, you know, the one that really impressed me was a fellow, uh, and I'll tell you his name because uh, he's dead and his wife's dead. Uh, 
Harley Davidson. Now, Harley Davidson was a pathologist at this particular hospital where I'd have been working, would have been working, and uh, he was very much a Civil War history. Uh, well, buff isn't buff isn't the right word. He was he was very much a, a, a scholar of the Civil War, and uh, not only is this, you know hundreds of secondary sources, but he also had a collection of primary source material. And, uh, you know, he knew Greek. Uh, he, the man was one of the most highly educated people I've ever met in my life. And, and one of the most gracious, thoughtful. Um, I, Spent a couple of afternoons, a couple of three afternoons over at his house. You know, I'd had dinner with him many times uh, in social settings. Well, you know, dinner is kind of a social setting. Isn't it? And uh, uh, I had the greatest respect and admiration for this man. And it was compounded by the fact that I, I consider him to have saved my son's life. When my son had a, a big basal cell carcinoma whacked off his forehead, it looked very unusual. And uh, I said to him when I was down there, I said, you know, I, I'd like you to look at these slides. He said, I can do that. He said, just give me the name of all the people involved and I'll, I'll write him a letter and have him tell me to, you know, have, have him tell them to release the slides to me and I'll look at them. And he looked at them. And about two or three weeks later, he said, well, they looked, they looked extremely unusual to me. Far, far, you know, something far more going on there than just your standard basal cell. And uh, he sent him up to the Armed Forces Institute of Pathology, which is where he had trained. And uh, they said this, this is a particularly unusual cell type of basal cell that indicates a predisposition to melanoma. And indeed, that's what happened a couple of years later. And he, he looked at those slides as well and determined that the initial resection had not been deep enough. And so the, the right procedure was finally done and right now my son is fine. And we're about 15 years out now from that, 14 years out from that. So I consider him to have saved my son's life. So I, I have a hard time saying anything bad about this man. So, one evening in late 2000, or might have been 2001, I think it was, I think it was fall of 2000, um, I was down there and they had laid on a nice dinner and, and they had Harley and my friend and then his wife, of course, and then uh, another friend of theirs uh, whose wife had gone back to Texas because they were in the process of moving and he was staying at their house before it sold. And she had gone back to Texas to, to, you know, arrange things. And so it was like one, two, you know, you know the, friend, the friend whose wife was in Texas, Harley, my friend, me, my friend's wife. Well, as the dinner, you know, ended, uh, and the brandy got passed about. Stories started to be told, and you know, I guess there was some wine involved. Well, one story was told by Harley, and he, he told this story about the time when he'd started as medical examiner down there in a county in South Carolina, because he actually lived in South Carolina. And uh, 
but he worked in just over the border in North Carolina. And uh, he did start it out. And of course, you know, he, he said at that time I was a new guy in town and I was from Virginia. And so they thought I was from the north. And, you know, and I had trained at a Yankee school or, you know, a Yankee school, Armed Forces Institute of Pathology. You know, I mean, I guess Northern Virginia was considered Yankee territory in that time. And uh, he said, so. Uh, they bring in a body of a guy that had been found on the railroad tracks. You know, and it kind of looked like a train had hit him. You know, the train hadn't run him over. You know, I mean, he was still sort of intact, but, you know, clearly it looked like the train had hit him. And uh, and he had been found lying on his back, you know. And uh, so Harley looked at the guy, he says, you know, he looked, looked, you know, he looked beat up, but he didn't look like there was anything obviously otherwise wrong. And, and the guys were getting ready to throw the sheet back over him, take him, take him away. And he says, just wait a minute. He says, let's, let's just turn this guy over. And, and he turned the guy over, and the guy had been shotgunned in the back. <laughs> there, you know, there, like, there were like 500, 500 shotgun pellet holes in this guy's back. So he'd been, he'd been murdered from behind and then laid, laid out face up on the railroad tracks to be eventually sort of beat up by some of the trains going by. Well, that, that established his reputation and not all that favorably right away <laughs> because I have a feeling that the guys that were bringing him this body probably, you know, knew who did it. I don't know how the case finally turned out, as far as the legal case, but. So as I said, the, guys, the guy was very erudite, very, very gracious. And uh, you know, you, if you talked with this man, you wouldn't have a clue, a clue to how flat out bigoted he was. Bigoted merging into hateful. And uh, I think how this came out was uh, he and uh, my friend were on the quality assurance or quality review committee for the hospital. Oh, go away. Stop flying around me. And uh, They had remarked, they were remarking about how they'd had a little bit, a noticeable, a noticeable increase in the HIV AIDS patients coming through. And uh, completely apropos of, well, I, I can't say apropos of nothing, I guess it was apropos of this discussion. Harley says something along the lines of, well, I don't think they should be burned at the stake. He says, but I, I think they they ought to be, you know, killed. Something something a lot faster and cleaner. Now I'm sitting right across from this man, and he this man knows I'm gay. By the way. It was an open secret. This man knows I'm gay. And it wasn't like he looked at me while he said it. And I don't think it was aimed. I, I really don't think it was aimed at me. I think the guy's just being honest about what he thought, what he felt, thought. Sometimes not the same thing, sometimes is. And I, 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 I kept my mouth shut. I wasn't going to make an issue of it. I mean, my friend still had to make a living in town. He had to stay in town and make a living. I wasn't going to make an issue for him. You know, I mean, no. It's 
Meanwhile, the guy, the guy whose wife went to Texas, started doing this. That was the kind of guy he was. He was, he was essentially a yokel. One of these, you know, one of these butt slapping, back slapping go. I, I liked the guy. I'd been over to his house. I liked his wife. I met the wife's dad, who was a professor of mathematics at the University of Texas. No, oh, but here's this guy. They're, they are since divorced, by the way. I don't know if the other guy, I don't know if this fellow who is alive or not, but anyway, they're divorced. I'm not going to tell you their name, his name. Um, so I thought, well, all right. You know, and, you know, it's waxing on, you know, we're getting up to 11, 30, 12, 12, 30, 1 o'clock. Now, when I stayed down there, I slept in the pool house, which was fine because, you know, it was nice. I mean, you're off by yourself, you know, turn on the TV, had your own can, you know, without the cat shit box in it. Well, that was disgusting when they had that in the house next to the room they I had me sleep in initially. But then they built a pool house that so was better. Now, you know, much as I much as I really liked my friend, and I did like this man a lot. God bless him. It's too bad he fell down the stairs and brained himself and died. But When, when I would go to bed, you know, when I'm ready to go to bed, I'm tired. You know, basically, I want to go to bed. You know, you know, I'll sit up and talk with you the whole night long. But when I want to go to bed, I want to go to bed. But he'd walk me out, and that was very gracious of him. And then he'd come in, and that's fine. And then, and then he'd stand there, and he'd, we'd, we'd talk for about another hour and a half. Well, that could be fine you know and he he'd help me unfold this he had a fold out couch there you know which you know lord knows you had to you had to you know completely fix back up every morning you couldn't you couldn't just leave the thing open all right but it's their house their rules that's fine and uh, so I was thinking, well, he's going to say to me something like, oh, guys, Joe, <clears throat> I'm so sorry, you know, but you understand how it is down here. And that's just Harley's very old school, you know, that's just the way he was brought up. And, and I would and I would have said, I, I completely understand. No problem. No, I mean, I, and I would. I, that was what I was expecting to happen. So, oh, he's going to say, you know, he's sorry that as a host he put me in this very awkward position or found me in this very awkward position he was going to say you suck he never did he never ever did he never ever alluded to that moment the rest of his life never which I I can only conclude that on some level, he agreed with the man. On some level, he agreed with this man. And I was appalled. And I never went down there again. And it wasn't until many years later that his wife's mother his mother-in-law, who I kept in touch with from time to time, asked me about this, and I finally told her this story. Well, what are you going to do? I mean, if that's the way the man feels, that's the way the man feels. I mean, you don't want the man to lie about it, do you? So, that's, that's that. And as, as like 
as a sort of a tail end of this, I'll tell you another story from Fort Wayne. This is shorter, guys. Now, one day I was in the operating room. We were doing, a, I was doing anesthesia on a, it was probably an aortic valve. Um, and uh, I won't tell you the surgeon's name because he's probably still alive. He's one of these thin, wiry types. Likes to run. They think they're going to live forever. So I'm not going to take any chances here. By... Although what I'm going to say is true. I'm not lying about it. Um, somewhere along the line, I don't know how... Again, you never know how these conversations get started. I mean, the, the issue of, you know, gays come up. and This was, even, this was before HIV AIDS. This was in 1979. Um, I was just, you know, somebody had been found out as being gay or in town. You know. Fort Wayne's a probably a big city, you know. Much bigger now than it was, but it, you know, it was a good sized city then too. Well it's the second largest city in uh, Indiana at the time. I think well I mean uh, Gary may have been a bit bigger, but that's part of Chicago, so that doesn't really count. Um, so anyway, he said, well I think they just basically be able to be, take out, be, you know, be taken out back of the barn and shot, and that'll solve the problem. So his, his solution to the problem of gays was to take them out back of the barn and shoot them. This is also an otherwise fairly educated man. He was a fine thoracic surgeon, a fine cardiac surgeon. An otherwise very pleasant individual. He had a sense of humor, you know, which, and a kind of subtle sense of humor. I mean, he was, he'd say things like, you know, you, know, you gotta understand, Fort, the Fort Wayne area is a very flat area. But he lived on the St. Joseph's River, which was like three or four feet higher than where it can, you know, you know went down into the city of Fort Wayne and merged with with uh, the St. Mary's to form the Maumee River in the center of town. He says, says my septic tank bed drains into the St. Joseph's River. Every time I flush my toilet, I think of you guys down here. I mean, that, you know, like it or not, I think that's funny. And then he bought one of the early Subarus, which, you know, at that point was notorious for being a non-gas guzzler, you know, a good fuel economy car. I don't know, maybe it still is. I don't know, they, they still didn't make them? I don't know. My son has a, has a Subaru, or did. Anyway, he says, yeah, it's so good that every two weeks I have to go out there and drain a gallon of gas out of it. Yeah, now that's, that's clever. You know I mean? So, but then he comes up with this little thing. Well, that's not surprising up there, or wasn't at the time. And uh, still, always a bit surprising among really educated people. Now, he said this in an operating room that contained himself, his partner, his, or his, yeah, his partner, who was also assisting in the procedure, me, two pump techs, an instrument nurse and a circulating nurse. So that's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven people. Of those seven people, three, three were gay. Me, the circulating nurse, who was a lesbian, and the instrument tech. Isn't it great? In, in flat out hatefulness and bigotry, great guys. You gotta love it when this nonsense happens right in front of you. Well, I don't know why I got thinking about this today. It's such a lovely day. And I'm sorry, I used the word lovely. I almost never do that. No. I don't think I've ever used that in about like you know, 
15, 20 years. It's an excellent day. It's sublime. And on that note, I'm going to say bye-bye, YouTubers. Here, I'll let you see the light here now. It's starting to turn into cathedral window light. You know, show the cathedral window light on the maple trees. Okay, bye-bye now.